I'm getting ready to put the upper tube assembly together. That'll be the wrap to the far left. Spider and secondary holder in the center there. Be mounting the focuser. And then to the right is the main upper tube assembly frame. Okay, we're in here in the uh, spray booth and I just went ahead and put the wrap inside the upper tube assembly. Uh, you can see here, the wrap is uh, riveted all the way around to the bottom and top ring. Uh, this locks the uh, front end in and makes it extremely rigid. Just finished installing the spider into the upper tube frame. Uh, larger scopes will have two screws per vein. Smaller scopes will have a single screw. These are pre-tensioned here and it's not recommended to adjust them. I'm getting ready to assemble the secondary holder. Uh, this video continues from where we left off on the secondary manufacturing video. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that one first and what you see in here will make a lot more sense. So we have the secondary optic with the mounting clips already mounted. The secondary heaters already glued down. We have the three pads on uh, already mounted underneath for the glass to sit on. And then this is the base plate, which has already been put in the lathe, spun, and the uh, plate squared to the center bolt, as we explained in the manufacturing video. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the optic into the holder. Grab the glass carefully. Slide it in like this. Get it up against the tabs, and then I'm going to carefully turn the whole thing over. So you can see the glass now in the holder. We have the three screws into the clips, and the screws are just snug. They will allow the glass to kind of shift a little. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to put the back plate in. And I want to just put these screws in and snug them up so that I get the back of the holder in the shape that it's going to be. So I've installed the uh, back plate. Again, just going to snug up the screws so the plate is holding the retainer exactly the way it's going to be in the telescope then I'll, I'll kind of pick it up and give it just a little shake we just kind of get that glass in as a neutral a position as possible once I do that I'll put it down I'll come back to the screws and the clips and I'll just go ahead and snug them up so the glass is now completely mounted up and uh, we do use a fiber batting that we roll up and put in. We don't really want to apply much pressure to the glass, as little as possible actually. What this is really doing is just holding the heater down to the glass in the event that the silicone fails and just applying a very small amount of pressure to the three pads on the face of the glass just really to stop it from sliding in any way from the normal operation of the scope from horizon to zenith. So again, very little pressure being applied here. Just going to fill this up, bring the wires to their appropriate locations, and then close up the back. Okay, we got the holder all done. Everything's tightened. Um, we got brought all our wires out. We're getting ready to put it into the spider. I'm installing the feather touch, getting the base plate on, and real quick I just wanted to explain a little bit about how we install our focuser board. When we're building the front end, uh, basically what we do, we install the spider, we install the secondary holder, and we bring it up to the very bottom of the spider so there's no gap, only a shim between the two. At that point, we measure the center of the secondary holder to get our alignment with the focuser. Then I actually bolt the focuser to the focuser board. We put it in position on the holder 
with the sight tube, I align it to the secondary and then we weld in the board with the hopes here that we're getting it as close to possible where I want that secondary holder to sit. Finished putting the feather touch in and I just want to note that the uh, screws that hold the feather touch to the focuser board, um, they are threaded into the board. So when I initially put the feather touch down, I just thread them into the focuser board without the nuts yet. This makes it really easy to adjust the, uh, the base if needed. So then you could just loosen this one up, tighten this one up to get your base to go where you want. And then once you have it locked down where you want it, then you put the nuts on the back and tighten them up. So I'm going to put the sight tube in and start sighting up the secondary and get it, uh, get it pretty close. I'm going to connect the wires. I'm going to go ahead and solder the RCA end on this to connect to the truss. Put the upper truss hardware in and uh, that'll finish the upper tube assembly. Have the upper tube assembly finished. The focus is mounted and aligned to the secondary. I have the secondary in and axial to and from the primary has been completed. So uh, we actually lock it out with this top nut. This has a set screw in it and we tighten it up just so you can make any rotational adjustment by hand so you never need to loosen this nut. Uh, we did the wiring coming down the outside. Got the RCA connector soldered in. And then also want to make note of the, uh, this is the upper truss clamp. And you can see there's two holes here. So this one is the visual position. And then if you want, you can unthread this all the way, put it in that hole, and that will bring the entire upper tube assembly uh, one inch closer to the primary, which gives you some more in-travel for uh, video or CCD imaging.